Hey guys, how are you? I am Sylvia, the wine entrepreneur, and as you know, you're on a journey, a journey of wine, spirits, culinary delights, and a good time. Welcome on board and all aboard, cooked and uncorked. Today we got an awesome chef and a restaurant tour for the show, and his name is Stefano. He's the chef, and he's from L'Aquila, one of my hometowns in Italy. And Riccardo Longo, he's a restaurateur from Roma. He found somebody from L'Aquila and brought him in. But first, before I bring him on stage, we're going to do the week in review. So you see right there on LinkedIn, you got Tino, Chef Tino, and Silvio. And uh, I have a, uh, a comment from Sophia Manuel. Sophia, thank you so much. She's the restaurant manager for Diplomat in Miami, and I appreciate uh, you very much. And all my fans from all over the world, I love you and I thank you. And uh, I wanted to give a special shout out to you, Sophia Manuel. Next, you got a nice shot of us with wine, and as you know, I love my wine. So, and today we got a very special uh, wine coming in from, uh, from Italy, from, from uh, Tuscany, and, and from Roma. And it is going to be featured by Riccardo Longo. So he's actually going to take some of my duties. Next, you see here, um, when I had Chef Tino, Chef Tino was the chef from uh, Panorama from uh, uh, La Familia and who now is the executive chef for the restaurant called Dino's Backstage in Glenside. Well, believe it or not, lo and behold, a good friend of mine named Alp Alkin said, hey, Silvio, Tino is my brother-in-law. Small world and uh, you know what? There's gonna come a point in time, I'm gonna be like, uh, um, like the actor Kevin Bacon. It's gonna be six, Six degrees of Silvio Lelli, and here is degree number one. Next, of course, we got a picture of cooked and uncorked, and uh, I got to tell you, I love doing this show. I love giving back to the restaurant tours. I love having the executive chefs on board, and um, just pairing wine with food is such a beautiful thing. It's an awesome time because, as I always say, food without wine is pointless. So without further ado, there's an incredible new restaurant, well, not new restaurant, a couple years, but uh, in Philadelphia on, on Chestnut Street, uh, Grand Cafe L'Aquila, and it's just an amazing location. And as I said, I have the chef and the restaurant tour on board. And before I do that, I kind of take a hint from David Letterman and I throw something at the camera, except instead of throwing it, I pitch it. Ah, I almost got you, right on the strike zone. So let's bring on board Ricardo and, of course, Chef Stefano. Hey, Ricardo, Ciao. my man. Come it's so good to see, see you. Good to see you. Hey. Nice to see you. I'm here. Vini nice Crete. <laughs> my man from L'Aquila. <laughs> you know, uh, so, so here to the left of me, I got Ricardo Lungo, and he's from Roma. And here I have his executive chef. Uh, from L'Aquila, and interesting enough, I had people from L'Aquila. As a matter of fact, I learned this recently that the people from Abruzzo mm -hmm. are from a tribe, just like the Romans were Etruscans. Mm -hmm. People from Abruzzo were called uh, um, Aquilante. Aquilano. 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 Yeah. Aquilano. And Aquilano you told from me that. Abruzzo and Abruzzese. Abruzzese. From Abruzzo, yeah. And, and if, you, if you notice it, right? Mini Creek, Mini Dove. <laughs> I was asking where he's going. And if you notice, right, we kind of have similar features. And, 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 yet, and now we have an Etruscan look, and he has that more elegant and that kind of like Roman nose. But you and me are a little more. Uh, yeah, I'm from Mountain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gentile Forte. Gentile Forte, yeah. Oh, well, veramente, yes. veramente. So tell me, um, I know what we're going to make, but I want you to tell uh, the audience what you're going to make. So, and I want you to teach them how to make it. Oh, yeah, And then course. we're going to open your wines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Today we are making uh, the, a famous, the most famous plate of Rome, carbonara. Yeah. And uh, we have the great ingredients from Rome. Then the Ricardo can explain us uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, ingredients we need. Yeah. And then uh, for, uh, 
for Grand Cafe we have a special thing for carbonara that is uh, uh, on top uh, is uh, the pancetta gelato. Quindi this is uh, the final surprise for uh, the carbonara. Okay, and, and interesting enough, uh, Ricardo, you went to L'Aquila. So I have, a, I have a tough job. I go to Italy every, every like, like you. <laughs> we, we both have tough jobs. Yeah, 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 go to yeah. Italy every few months. I know. Uh, I, I go for research, research development. Yeah, so right, so right, I, right. I, I do. So um, you can drink your frascati. Yes. So I, yeah. I, I, I usually go for 10 days and I'll visit five or six cities. And basically, I hit the best vineyards in every area. And I meet with the great chefs and also nonnas. For me, the nonnas. Yeah. That's that's really the you know. Nonna the, means grandma in, in Italian. The grandmoms, yeah. the that because really the genesis of every city's history of their cuisine comes with the nonna. The nonna basically. I love it. That's you good. Know? That's a so, good point. So so actually the dish we're doing today uh, is actually one of my family's dishes. So this this is uh, you know one of my uh, uh, my what aunt's was, recipe. What was nonna's name? Uh, nonna was Annunziata. 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 I had a nonna Annunziata. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the Sigramano. <laughs> <laughs> Her brother's from a different, from a different mother. <laughs> anyway, go, I, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Oh, no, no, no. So, so this is the sort of classic dish of Rome. Uh, it's got an interesting history to it. Um, Absolutely. Th there's, there's a couple different theories because it's called carbonara. It's like carbone. It means like coal miner, sort of like coal, coal miner dish. So the one theory is that it was a Roman coal miner dish. It was, it was very much a, like almost a, a peasant dish. It very much, it, it right, is, yeah. Right. And, and all these dishes really, they come, the best dishes come from poverty, you know, because the grandmoms and nonnas, they had limited ingredients and they'd be very creative. Right. You know, and that, right. that's where these, uh, uh, the other, the other like, thing. Like, like a puttanesca sauce. A but we, we don't go there though. We won't, we won't go to the history that quickly. <laughs> 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 the, the Do your research, you'll understand. You can Google it. Uh, then the, the, the new theory which is getting traction is actually that, believe it or not, there's an American connection with this. Because th this, this dish was created after World War II. Yeah. And there's a lot of GIs in Rome, and the GIs loved bacon and eggs. Ah. And so the theory is that this, this dish was actually created for, um, like, for an American power. Yeah. So it's it's an interesting. So who knows which my, one's true? Because my there's my father was a, was a little boy during World War II, um, and unfortunately he, he lost his uncle. Uh, excuse me, he lost his brother, his younger brother, right. from an American bomb that was trying to bomb the uh, the German supply line going along Abruzzo, right. right? God rest your soul, Fulvio, <laughs> and and Dad Giuseppe Lelli. Um, but interesting enough, uh, you, you're absolutely right about the the American GIs. Um, given an influence on on the uh, the, the food cuisine, you know, the, but and and he also said they were so hungry, right? Yeah. Back then, after World War II, Italy was was uh, completely impoverished and, and desolate. Uh, they were so hungry. My father said that uh, they they almost ate all the pigeons. Well, pigeon is a specialty, yeah. and that's why because of the poverty, and that's you know it, it sort of got them to get creative. I mean, in Rome, we have a whole cuisine called the Quinto Quarto, which is the, the fifth fourth. It's all the pieces of the animal that nobody wanted to eat, which back then they would just give it away. And the poor people created a cuisine out of it. Today, it's the yeah. whole cuisine yeah. from. It's so a gourmet. It's, wow. You know, yeah. so it's, wow. You know, oxtail, intestines, all that kind of stuff. That's amazing. That's so. amazing. So let's get started. Let's, let's, let's of make course. a meal. We, uh, we Thank you for that history. The first step is uh, cooking pasta. We have mm -hmm. uh, homemade pasta. You make it uh, in Grand Cafe. Okay. Yep. So, Ricardo, the, the pasta that we make. So, some of flour water. Semolina flour water, and you choose semolina be because it's less well, starch? Yeah, I mean, the semolina will give you, uh, let's say, the right consistency of the pasta for mm -hmm. carbonara. You don't want the egg in there. Okay, then gotcha. Then, the first uh, great ingredient is the guanciale. You know, the different, if we want to explain this difference between pancetta and guanciale. So guanciale in Rome let's, is, let's is go ahead uh, and do it. you know, let's say, the piece de resistance of, you know, pork. This is going to be your flavorful, basically the cheek. Uh, it's the cheek bacon, and right. it's going to give you the amazing flavor. And in Rome, really, it's a cornerstone of what we cook with. So when you talk about like matriciana, carbonara, gricia, all these famous Roman pastas, and guanciale it, is your base. And 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 uh, it's important because of, of the fat. The, the fat and the flavor. It's just like yeah. the, the flavor of the guanciale. It's, it's got a sort of a sweet flavor to it. Now, now the, the, this what we're doing here because the carbonara is one of those dishes yeah. that it's all over the place and everyone does it wrong. So, so we're here. We're, we're Shame on you guys. No, we're gonna, we're gonna educate right. because it's it, it, in the end, it's an iconic Roman dish. Yeah. And wherever you go, people are doing it wrong. 
So one of the things we want to do is actually do it the right way and teach okay. people. So actually, there's no butter, there's no oil. What you do is you just render, you render the guanciale. Okay. And basically that gives you the base for your, for your, for okay. your sauce. I know my audience are going to be like, what, what, what the heck is uh, guanciale? So the gu guanciale is the uh, cheek, the cheek of the pig. All right, so, it's like a so, bacon. So how does somebody get that kind of bacon? You have to go to a specialty, you can get it online. You can order right. online, or you go to a specialty store like a De Bruno's, mm -hmm. you know, or a high-end specialty store will carry it. Or, or yeah. your butcher, if you go to your butcher, right. local butcher. Okay. There's a lot of butchers in South Philly that you know. Hey, yo. Yeah. If you, if, you, if, you, if, you have, if you have some, if you have some Italians in the area that are shopping, they'll probably have the guanciale at the butcher. Guanciale. All right. <laughs> it's, a, it's a type of bacon. So, it's essentially the, the the cheek. So so uh, the key is that to keep this simple, because here in America, if you go to restaurants, a lot of times you'll see like. Butter, cream, oil, peas, all kinds of crazy right. stuff in the carbonara. The carbonara actually is as simple as you said, peasant dish. Right. And that's basically what he's going to show. And, and the process here is basically he's going to render down the, uh, the guanciale, and you're going to actually get like the liquid. And that, that becomes your base right. for your sauce. Right. So you don't need any oil or butter or anything else. Right, right, right. And, so, know, so thereby it's, it's not going to stick. And, and, then, and then the key to this dish, like with all Italian dishes, the quality of the ingredients. Right. So you need, you know, really high quality guanciale. The cheese, you want to make sure pecorino romano. Pecorino. And, and, and it's almost like a, a, a sea salt to, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And, and the big difference between this and Parmesan is it's sheep as opposed to cow. Right, right. So that cheese. gives you, like, that pungent, you know, intense. I mean, pecorino is much more intense. Right, right, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, but it's important to use the high quality ones. You know, I mean, there's a lot of fake food, you know, like, the, the ones that the town enjoy get angry about is Parmesan, you know, Parmesan from Wisconsin. You know, whereas <laughs> really, the real thing is Parmigiano. And when you from try... Parmigiano. From, from Parma, right. right. And, and, and when you try them next to each other, you know, it's, it's a world of difference. Absolutely. So, so when, when you have a dish, and you know, the reason why the carbonara is here in America, a lot of times they add a lot of stuff, because maybe they're not using the best ingredients. But to have a great taste with a few simple ingredients, the ingredients need to be lost. Awesome. Because you're just highlighting those ingredients. Right. So if you don't have those awesome ingredients, I can understand why you would put in butter, cream, peas, because you try to sort of disguise you're, the. Fat. You're masking the flavor. Right. Right. Yeah. So you got you have to do it right, ladies and gentlemen. You have to have the correct ingredients. So when the guanciale became uh, crispy, so en enough crispy, uh -huh. is uh, in, and the pasta is ready, we can put the pasta with the guanciale, and they finish uh, to cooking all together. So uh, we're coming along there, am I right? Yeah. Right. There we go. Here's the pasta. The pasta's already been. And you guys made this pasta? Yeah. At, at... Wow. Check it out. You know, let, let me let me let me test oh, one. Oh sure. No no no. Ah, sure. Here. I'm just gonna grab one. So I, I want to see the, con uh, the the texture. Al, al the, other, the other secret <laughs> is uh, to use the the, um, uh, the water of the pasta to little water. Right, right, because it adds a special flavor to it. So yeah. it's strong. Do you put olive oil in your water when it's cooking? No, absolutely not. How about sale, salt? Salt, yes, of course. For the cooking, okay. you need salt. What kind of salt do you use? Ah, usually we, we use the commercial salt because uh, it's, a, it's good salt. It's no, we don't want uh, other flavor. Salt, that's what yeah, I'm Yeah, because uh, we don't want other flavor for uh, this. Okay. So understand that the, the reason, I think part of the reason the Italians prefer their pasta to be al dente is because they can cook it twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can eat it twice. They can eat it. Uh, all right, so this is the big secret now. This is no no secret. It's going to happen right now. Okay. And, Let me see. And, and the secret, the secret is, we wait. Uh -oh. so, so you actually take it off because if if you were to add the egg right now, you would get scrambled eggs. And a lot of times you see carbonara, then it's like scrambled eggs. Right. So what you do is you actually you take this off the heat. You wait about thirty oh, seconds. It smells incredible. Yeah. It smells incredible. And and we wait. And then so why and once, once this settles down, because you, you actually want this to be almost like a little creamy. Yeah, okay. and, and this is, yeah, you want to explain the mix that we have here is the eggs, the pecorino that you, and the, re, the black pepper. The okay. The carbonara. So, so, so now while we, we go like this, while we wait, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to cut to break. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we come back, we're, we're going to plate the food. 
or we're going to finish cooking, plate the food, and drink your wine and talk about your Bravo. coffee Perfecto. also. Perfecto. So we will be back at you, two and two. They are the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen. But what does it take to strengthen our service members? What does it take to let them know that we stand behind them, wherever they are? What does it take to bridge the distance and keep them connected to family, home, and country? And what does it take to prepare them for their future when their service to the nation is complete? What does it take to strengthen our service members so they can be the greatest force for good in the world? It takes a force. Be a force behind the forces. Share a message today at force.uso.org. I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes together. Choosing Medicare coverage can be a very confusing and complicated process. Help is just a phone call away, 856 226 4800. As a licensed insurance agent, I'll assist you in making an informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare benefits consultation, 856 226 4800. Boardwalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. We do it. Hop. Casinos by the ocean. Hop. Now that's New Jersey. 130 miles of beautiful beaches, solid rock, and everything in between. Look in the window. <laughs> now that's New Jersey. Burlington County College. Is now Rowan College at Burlington County. Still the same great faculty. At a community college ranked top 50 in the nation. Basically, we earn more and pay less. RCBC students are accepted at Rowan University after graduation. And get a bachelor's degree for around $30,000. Online and Mount Laurel students get a 15% Rowan University tuition discount. And at many scholarship opportunities. So you earn more and pay even less. Rowan College of Burlington County. Your path to success. They are the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen. But what does it take to strengthen our service members? What does it take to let them know that we stand? Hey, my beautiful fans and friends from all over the world. I am Sylvia, the wine entrepreneur. As you already know, I have Ricardo Lungo and Stefano here right now from Grand uh, Cafe L'Aquila. And right now, uh, Ricardo is putting the pecorino and some fresh ground pepper. So this is the, the carbonara. This is basically the, that gives that distinctive look to the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the coal, you know, the, the coal miner dish. So basically, we, we finish it on top with this. And we get our... You know, interesting enough, you guys make homemade gelato. Yeah. Not only homemade, homemade pasta. Gelato. Hey, what's yeah. the address of, of... 1716 Chestnut Street. 1716 Chestnut Street, Philadelphia, PA, probably 1914... No, uh, 191... 1903. Stefano is very humble, but he's actually the gelato champion of Italy, an international press world champion, considered by many the I best know. gelato maker in the world. He and, makes his own gelato, by the way. And, and besides regular gelato, he's very well known for gastronomics, 
this I think is unquestionably the best in the world at doing this. And he takes, the idea with these dishes is sort of like apple pie a la mode, where you have like the sweet and, you know, the, but rather than sweet, it's savory. So you have that hot and cold sensation of the, of the hot pasta with the cold gelato, and basically just take a little bit of both. Uh, so it's, it's, it's an amazing looking dish. In fact, this dish looks almost too good to eat. It's a piece of I hope we're getting of pictures of this right away. <laughs> hey guys, try to get a picture of that because that is just, uh, that is picture worthy, that's for sure. <laughs> now, you guys, are, are we gonna, talk to me. Oh, no, we split to one, uh, your, one is your. No, no, we, I well, can do we, we should, should we open some wine with this? Or yeah, 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 let's go ahead and open. This and then uh, another thing for uh, start eating the first time, uh, uh, I want that you take uh, one piece of gelato with uh, pasta and yeah. eat all together. Then, uh, usually uh, a lot of people uh, decide then to make uh, like a cold sauce, uh, like mixing and became a cold sauce. But uh, for first thing, I want that you try between uh, one piece and pasta. And then your choice. Okay. All continues like this. Okay. Also. And uh, what is the piece? Is that a piece of... Uh, ah, this is just for the okay. Yeah, you can eat because it's cooking pancetta. And okay. uh, you can see the just for the, the look of the plate. So, so tell me about this beautiful Frescati. I so, so we have two wines here from from Rome. So Frescati literally is from the hills of Rome. Yeah. And this is a wine that has been produced in the uh. hills of Rome since the time of Julius Caesar, if you can believe it. No, so I believe it. So over two thousand years, basically the same recipe. Frescati is the name of the village in Rome, up in the hills. Right. And it's a it's a blend of uh, Trebbiano Mavazia. Uh, so it's a historic blend. Trebbiano is a white wine grape, uh, and as, as so is uh, uh, Mavasia. But Trebbiano, I know uh, people from Abruzzo grow a lot of Trebbiano. Abruzzo has the best Trebbiano because it's, it's one of the few that are, are actually grown and bottled on its own. It's actually bottled Trebbiano d'Abruzzo. Right. The Roman Trebbiano is uh, it's a little bit too acidic to mm -hmm. just drink on its own, so that's why they blend it with Mavasia, which is a little more floral and citrusy. And, and interestingly enough, um, Steph? Oh, yes. if, if, if you smell the wine, there's a, uh, a crisp, crisp uh, crispness to it, almost like in, in, in a, a, a slight, um, uh, uh, small tiny bubbles. The, uh, and that's that great, yeah, it's got a great acidity. Yeah, and yeah. It's just, uh, kind of reminds me of, of Vernazza di San Gimignano a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe even a, uh, a Spanish um, uh, verdejo, mm -hmm. like a, like a I think th I think, th I think that those are great comparisons. Because in the end, they're all great food wines, and this is a, this is a fantastic food. So, wine. so what I like to do is is usually eat then drink and then do the at the same time. But we'll, we'll do this first since there's uh, Chin three. Chin 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 and here's to you, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers. Beautiful wine. Yeah. Amazing. And, and this is the classic pairing with the carbonata. Yeah. Um, and then later I'll let you try a red, because there's also a red wine they can pair with it, which is a classic of, uh, of Rome also. And, and uh, interesting enough, you, uh, so we're gonna have to, since we have three glasses, we're gonna have to drink. I'll let you try, yeah. What? No, no, we'll have to finish all the wine. <laughs> <laughs> so come on. We, we have, yeah. Manja, manja? Manja, manja. Manja, yeah. Manja. Yeah, manja. Enjoy. Okay. For you, Ricardo. Okay. All right. Now, my uh, parents came from Abruzzo. They used fork and spoon, but now the Italians, they got rid of, most Italians got rid of the spoon. So, so while you see, like, I'm I, a throwback to, yeah. to the day. Here, please. Uh, no, no. Mangi I, 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 we, mangi we, come man. Okay. Mangi con Silvia. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a big appetite. I'll <laughs> <laughs> a little guy like him. <laughs> All right, so I, I took a little bit of the ah, gelato perfect. with the. You see, you so, you, so you see how creamy. Uh, see how see, uh, there's no mess here, no fuss, no mess. The spoon serves. And the beauty of this dish is that you're gonna you're gonna get each of the individual flavors. Mm. You're gonna try the guanciale, the mm. pecorino cheese, mm. the black pepper. They hit you like an orchestra, though, in a symphony. It's the best. I, I, that is so absolutely incredibly good. I, yeah, I'm going to take you home with me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I just hope my wife doesn't get rid of me. Oh my God, that's incredible. So what, and then what I like to do is take the, the food and then drink the wine and kind of feel feel the uh, the, the the palate with the wine and the food. 
Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so this is what we call a carbonara dop. So dop meaning that basically it's the way that it's done historically, sort of protected. <laughs> Like, like, with, like, with, like with the wines, the DOP wines. This is a DOP sort of pasta dish. Uh, obviously with... In with American, with it's just, it's dope. <laughs> <laughs> <Or> <laughs> tell me about that picture you have on the... On the uh, okay, so that's... Uh, uh, so that actually is... Uh, we were actually a uh, spokesperson for uh, an Italian mozzarella company, and they came in and did a commercial with us, and that's obviously Stefano, me, my brother Gigio, and actually my father Mario. Oh, so yeah? We got, yeah, so we got a family affair there. On that Amen one. to that. So this is me and Stefano at the bar at Grand Cafe L'Aquila, having a good time, drinking wine, and eating gelato. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so actually, That's one of the fun things we do is actually gelato pairings. Uh, this was uh, 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 Fox News came in and did a special, actually on our coffee. They, uh, they came in and, uh, you know, which I can talk about that. We, we were, uh, you know, Stefano, before he was a gelato maker, was a coffee roaster. Oh, yeah. And he actually, yeah. yep, uh, wow, he was one, one, one of the uh, yeah, top good. coffee roasters in Italy, actually, and uh, he was asked to represent Italy at the G8 summit for coffee. So he's like uh, Leonardo da Vinci, basically. He's a, a renaissance man. <laughs> That's great. I gotta, uh, I gotta, I gotta uh, bring your coffee onto the portfolio. This is obviously the, the outside of our, of our restaurant. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then... Ah, we, actually, we just, this is last week, we won Trebi Carey, oh, uh, wow. which is, ba I'm, I'm sorry, we won Gambaro Rosso, we're at the Trebi Carey event, but we, we won the Gambaro Rosso, we were the first restaurant in Philadelphia to ever be included in the Gambaro Rosso guide, uh, which basically, which basically is, a, is a guide for Italians, right. for Italian restaurants, and historically, they were always restaurants in Italy, but now they're going outside of Italy, so they gave, uh, 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 basically awards to a few places in New York and us in Philadelphia, so that was that was fun. That's that's an amazing award. And this this is actually what we were talking about before: Stefano winning the Italian Gelato Championship. This is in Rimini. My a man. A few years oh, back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to Rimini. And I lost a little weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rimini, Rimini uh, is such a uh, gorgeous uh, uh, resort seaside. Um, I accidentally ended, uh, you know, was there on a road trip and I said, oh, I wonder what this Rimini is. Mm -hmm. And I, and I stopped and I was just a, it was like a, uh, the Italian Riviera and it was yeah. an incredible town. A lot of crazy nightlife there. That's, it's known. Right. I mean, Stefano can tell you, he lives in L'Aquila and he would actually drive from L'Aquila to Rimini to hang out at night, right? Am, am I right? Am I, <laughs> I did, I did uh, four years in, in, in the, before I went to college, I, I went to Villanova University. Before mm -hmm. I went to Villanova, I did four years in the military. Mm -hmm. And I guess because of the name Silvio Lelli, they sent me to Sicily, right? But it was gorgeous. I, I was not that far from Catania. Oh, wow. You know, every Beautiful. morning I wake up and I would see Mount Etna, you know, puff and smoke. And there's a real dichotomy between the Italians from, from where we are and Sicilians. It, it's almost uh, like uh, an embarrassment. But in reality, it's, it's uh, an incredible looking island. And... Um, I had such a good time. Uh, oh, you were talking about driving to Rimini. Every weekend, I would drive to Giordini Nassos Taramina. Oh, oh wow. and it was such wow. an incredible. Yeah, it was an, an <laughs> incre incredible time. So, listen, uh, we need to wrap things up. Let's talk about once again um, the restaurant. Um, so it's located. 1716 Chestnut Street. 1716 Chestnut Street, Philadelphia, PA, 19103. The website? GrandCafeLaquila.com. And the one thing we didn't mention, this was actually a historic restaurant that won Cafe of the Year for all of Italy in 2007 and was destroyed in an earthquake in 2009. Steph Stefano's place was right. destroyed. Right. Us being friends, yeah. we, we realized that L'Aquila would take 20 years to rebuild. So we said, let's bring this place. L'Aquila is made of stone. <laughs> and in and, and, and 2009, with, with, you know, there was a huge earthquake. and it Destroyed it, the whole city. Yeah, but uh, I think the, the destiny. Because you know the translation of L'Aquila in English? What? Eagles. Eagles. Oh! <laughs> That's true. When, when, he, when, he came, yeah. when he came to Philadelphia, he saw the... Because also, the color... He plays a rugby player. Yeah. And it That's was the cool. colors of his rugby uniform and like a similar logo. And he's like, what is that? And like, I was wondering why you're wearing... I'm like, that's our Philadelphia... Like That's <laughs> jersey. That's great. So listen. Absolutely wonderful. Had such a wonderful, uh, fantastic time. Make sure you go to Grand Cafe L'Aquila in Philadelphia on Chestnut Street and uh, check out these two 
uh, handsome men and uh, let them know that I sent you because they're just absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week, uh, Wednesday at noon, or you can catch on demand on rvntv.tv. Have a great day. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.